theory we did till that uh, energy sir yeah we did till energy right yes sir total energy very good okay so we will do few more problems based on this actually concept wise we are we are almost done but we will do few more problems which are based on calculating the time period of anything which is in a session so this is a very important concept because uh, it is see when i say time period of any particle in shm it need not be restricted only to this particular chapter it can be from any of the chapters okay so i'm going to tell explain how to calculate the time period of any object in sh okay so let's see how to do that first find the unbalanced force these are the steps you need to follow okay so find the unbalanced force equate the force to m into a okay most of the scenarios you will have the force is uh, uh, in terms of m into a and this unbalanced force will be in terms of displacement okay mostly because when i say unbalanced force it is because of the restoring force restoring force you always try to write it in terms of displacement because it is k into x then equate that k into x to m into a then find a in terms of x x means i am talking about displacement or sometimes you will find it in terms of theta also provided it is some rotational motion okay find a in terms of linear displacement or angular displacement okay then once you find compare a obtained in step 3 with a is equal to minus omega square x from step 4 find omega okay once you find that omega write omega is equal to 2 pi by t and find the value of time okay so these are the simple steps that we need to follow to solve any problem that is based on time period calculation of shm it can either be time period or sometimes it can be a problem based on frequency also you will have this kind of a problem in your 12th standard also which was actually not there in cbsc but remember these steps i'll tell i'll tell you when the problem comes it is there in electrostatics it is there in magnetism all those chapters okay so make a note guys any doubt okay shall we do problems which are based on this okay i'll show you a simple example so what is the time period of simple pendulum 2 pi root of l by g yes there is a known formula simple pendulum's time period is 2 pi root of l divided by g where l stands for the length of the string and g stands for the acceleration due to gravity okay let's try to derive the same thing in three steps using the above method steps so when i take the when i displace the object through an angular displacement of theta 
then what are all the forces that are acting on it mg mg cos theta and mg sin theta okay now out of all these forces which is the unbalanced force which is a force mg which is trying theta. to yes so mg sin theta is the restoring force that is the first step after this what are we supposed to do okay so in this case i cannot write it as mg sin theta is equal to ma directly because the object is not in a translatory motion rather it is in a rotational motion so when it is in a rotational motion then one more thing equate force to ma similarly if it is in rotation motion equate torque to i alpha okay this is another step you need to equate torque to i into alpha so what is the value of torque here guys torque about the point p is how much that is m into l square that is i into alpha i hope you understood how i wrote ml square because the moment of inertia of an object about any uh, about a particle uh, sorry moment of inertia of a particle about any axis is mass into distance square into alpha is the angular rotation that is going to take place right so torque is equal to ml square into alpha so ml square into alpha is equal to what is the torque produced due to mg sin theta that is nothing but mg sin theta into perpendicular distance that is l so concentrate guys i am using torque is equal to force into perpendicular distance also i am using torque is equal to i into alpha in this case i is ml square i hope that point is clear so m and m will get cancelled l and l will get cancelled l into alpha is equal to g into sin theta if theta is small we know that sin theta can be approximated to theta when you take and substitute it here l into alpha will be equal to g into theta which implies alpha is equal to g by l into theta okay when a is equal to omega square x in terms of magnitude alpha will be equal to omega square theta okay so alpha is equal to g by l into theta alpha is equal to omega square theta when you compare both omega square will be equal to g by l which implies omega is equal to root of g by l and omega is nothing but 2 pi by t is equal to root of g by l so t is 2 pi root of l divided by g okay now <clears throat> let's try to do this problem so there is a simple pendulum which has a time period t1 the point of suspension one minute the point read, read this question please everybody has this paper right a simple pendulum has a time period t1 the point of suspension is now moved upward according to the rotation y is equal to kt square where y is the vertical displacement the time period now becomes t2 find the ratio of t1 square by t2 square so what are they trying to say so what are they trying to say what do you mean by the point of suspension is now 
see let's try to break the question and analyze okay there is a simple pendulum which has a time period t1 okay i understood that if i take the length of this time uh, pendulum as l then what is t1 according to the relation they are trying to speak it is 2 pi root l just now it is 2 pi root l by g that is a value of t1 i understood that okay now they are doing something else they are doing an experiment the point of suspension is now moved upward according to the relation y is equal to kt square where y is the vertical displacement so what they are trying to do is if the pendulum is like this okay so there is a high possibility that you will misunderstand this question if it is l then the time period of this is 2 pi root l by g which is called as t1 now if this whole system is vertically moved upwards according to what relation the displacement is equal to k into t square where the displacement is changing with respect to time what will happen to the acceleration guys are you are you able to understand my question when i suspend the object and give it the only acceleration that is acting on the object is g but whereas when this whole system is moved in the upward direction then there is going to be some effective gravity acting on it that is when this whole system is going to accelerate i'm repeating when the whole system is going to accelerate is this going to be an inertial frame of reference or non inertial frame of reference non inertial frame of yes. reference so when it is a non inertial frame of reference what are we supposed to do you will apply a force no pseudo force yes you apply a pseudo force a pseudo force has to be applied in which direction opposite opposite direction and what is the value of it you need to apply it on the object which is accelerating the op the force that you need to apply is m into a whereas instead of writing it as a i will write it as ay because the acceleration is definitely going to be a function of y let's see what it is going to be then what is going to be the effective acceleration guys can you guys tell me so what will be the effective acceleration g is already acting in this direction ay is also acting in the downward direction that is m into g effective is equal to mg plus m into ay this is a similar concept of the weight of a person when the lift is moving upwards so m will get cancelled so what will be the value of g effective it will be g plus ay now what is the value of t2 guys 2 pi root of it is the same length l because the length is not changing be careful l divided by in the place of g, g what that's it so t2 is equal to 2 pi into root of l by g effective is nothing but g plus ay now comes an important question when y is equal to kt square dy by dt is going to give me velocity that is 2 kt then d square y by dt square is going to give me 2k right so where k is 1 meter per second square then what will be the value of acceleration acceleration along y direction is 2 into 1 that is going to be 2 meter per second square now is our problem solved so t1 square by t2 square is equal to 4 uh, it is going to be 1 by g divided by 1 by g effective that is g effective divided by g how much is that guys that is 10 plus 2 divided by 10 12 by 10 or 6 by 5 6 by 5 is how much 1.2 something is there an option 6 by 5 is there any doubt Is there anyone who is not clear with what I did? Clear, sir. Okay. 
sir if the system is moving upwards mm-hmm. won't the g yeah. effective reduce like 10 not a 10 uh-huh. minus nadaka that, that is because of the pseudo force sir you go no revisit this concept no when there is a person standing inside the lift let's say he is standing on a weighing machine if the lift is stationary whatever weight is been shown by the weighing machine will be his exact weight when the same person is moving down his weight will tend to decrease this is exam same example as that of giant wheel which i told you uh, in the case of that exhibition when you go up you will feel heavy when you come down you will float oh opposite okay okay opposite that is because of the pseudo force okay. yes sir okay now we'll do the next set of problem that are based on time period let's try to do this problem which is a combination of spring i think king's model is also in board yes it's a combination of uh, spring and king's model let's try to do it so one end of a long metallic wire of length l is tied to the ceiling the other end is tied to a massless spring of spring constant k a mass m hangs freely from the free end of the spring the area of cross section and the ends modulus of the wire are a and y respectively if the mass is slightly pulled down and released it will oscillate with a time period p equal to how much okay so this take time analyze and tell me what is going to be the physics behind this problem. Tell me. How can we solve this? let me look at this problem okay so what idea are you getting guys there is a wire okay and there is a spring that is connected and there is a block that is suspended here of mass m okay do you guys know what is going to be the time period of a spring block system okay forget about it i don't want to explain this time period of a spring block system that is just 2 pi root m by k it's it's an extension of that problem anyways i'll cover in this all this it's and see so the spring has a spring constant let's say k1 now the wire is also elastic in nature that is why it has this eng's modulus concept it is not stiff it is extensible right so let's say this has a spring constant of k2 now tell me guys how do we calculate the time period i gave you certain steps right so time period is given by the formula 2 pi by omega so our work is to find out omega first i'll explain you the elaborate way then i'll explain you a shortcut okay now tell me one thing if i take the spring and the spring as two different objects how are these two objects connected physically so when i say series. how are they connected yes they are in series right so with respect to see whenever you talk about a series and a parallel connection there should be some differentiating factor so when i talk about the resistors connected in series when can i say the resistors are connected in series 
there is specific condition that need to be followed what is it one end is directly connected to the that is that is physically done so the same the current, current this current in both the resistors should be the same right technically so when i say two resistors are connected in parallel then what should be the same thing potential difference it is the potential difference so how we are actually getting this is the things to remember okay see guys listen carefully the logic i'm saying is applicable for current electricity and capacitors as well as well as there are inductors in series and parallel also that time also it will help you so concentrate and listen to it carefully so when i say v is equal to ir okay this is an expression with how many variables in it two sir two are variables and one is a constant so if i forget that constant depending on which variable out of the two is going to be constant in that particular scenario we are able to call it as a series or a parallel connection am i right right v is equal to ir v is constant then we call it as parallel i is constant we call it as series similarly if i have q is equal to cv for a capacitor okay that's what you learned this year. q is equal to cv how many variables are there again Two. 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 What are the two? Charge and potential difference. So capacitor is eliminated. So depending on which is going to be constant across both the capacitors, you will be deciding series and parallel. In a similar way, in a similar way, with respect to a spring also, I need to have two variables to decide what will happen during parallel and series connection. So with respect to a spring, so spring is a mechanical system. Resistor is an electrical system. Resistor, capacitor, inductor are electrical system. So, with respect to a mechanical system, what is the main context I am going to concentrate upon? It is F is equal to. So, with respect to a spring, is this not the equation that we are going to form? F is equal to K into X. Guys, does it make sense? Now listen. Out of F is equal to K X again. There will be two variables and one constant for sure. Wherever series parallel comes, three terms, one constant, two variables. This here, force and displacement are the two variables. K is a constant. It's a spring constant. Name itself six. Now, depending on whether force is going to be constant or X is going to be constant, I can divide it as a series and parallel connection. Now, listen to this carefully. If I take a spring like this. Then, by looking at it, I can say they both are in parallel. They both are parallel, right? So that's how they appear to us. So when I apply a force, what do you think will be common between these two springs? If I call their spring constants as K1 and K2. Now I have a question: Are both the springs going to experience the same force, or are they going to get displaced by the same amount? Look at the diagram. If they have to be parallel forever, if they have to be parallel forever, think what is supposed to happen to this block? Should the block be horizontal as it is now, or it should start getting inclined? Should the block be horizontal, or is it going to become like this? What is the answer? Horizontal. Has to be horizontal. Means what should happen to both the springs? They should experience. They should experience the same amount of extension. Okay. Now comes the question. So when can you say two springs are connected in parallel? Make a clear, make a clear note of it. When will you say that two springs are connected in parallel? When the extension in both the springs is going to be constant, or I can put it in the other way also. I can put it exactly in the opposite way. When a force is applied on parallel springs, the extension in both the springs will be the same. The second statement actually makes more sense. So, what do you think will happen in the case of series? The force experienced by both. The force springs. experienced by both will be the same. Okay, when the force experienced is going to be the same, 
then the extension here, if I call it as x1 and the extension here, I call it as x2, okay? Then what is the force that is acting? What is the restoring force that is going to act on the object? That's what we need to answer. So what is going to be the restoring force, guys? So the restoring force on spring is K1 into X1. So what is going to be the restoring force in string? It will be K2 into X2 such that the total extension is nothing but x the total extension x is nothing but x1 plus x2 is there any doubt guys so what is going to happen here the extension is going to be different correct now the force experienced by the spring is f the force experienced by the string is also f and the restoring force is also f so if I call this restoring force as K effective into X, what do you mean by that K effective? Means if I replace the spring and the string with some other material, that material will be, will be performing the same duty that is performed by these two individual objects. So F is equal to K effective into X, then X is equal to F divided by K effective. X1 is how much? F divided by K1 and X2 is F divided by K2. By using x1 plus x2 is equal to x, tell me what is the relation between k effective, k1 and k2. One by k effective is equal to one yes. by k1 plus one by k1. One by k effective is equal to one by k. Is it not similar to that of a capacitor? 1 by k effective is equal to 1 by k1 plus 1 by k2. Now comes an important question. So the time period of a spring block system is equal to 2 pi root of m by k. I'll tell you how it has come, okay? It is very, very simple. So you can please make a note of it. If I have a simple spring and a block, this is what is called as a spring block system. And the time period of a spring block system is 2 pi root m by k because the restoring force is kx. If I equate kx to ma, a will be equal to k by m into x. a is equal to omega square x. Compare these two, follow the steps that I told, you will get 2 pi is equal, uh, t is equal to 2 pi root m by k. Correct? Uh, similar to the previous problem, in this case, what do you think will be the time period? 2 pi root of, what is the mass that is suspended, guys? Irka, mass have they given? Hmm. Mass is m. m. M divided by, what is the only replacement I need to do here? I cannot directly take it as k. Rather, I will take it as k effective. So K1, k2 by k1 plus k2. Yes. K1, k2 by k1 plus k2. So in this problem, what I meant to say is, if you observe, it's just a two mark problem. You need not sit and do all these things. I actually explain the concept. So you, the starting step is going to be this thing. And you already know the fact that they are in series. So K effective will be equal to K1, K2 by K1 plus K2. Now our work is to find out what is that K1. K1, how much have they given? What is the uh, spring constant of a... Uh, spring constant is K. K. What about the strings spring constant? For that, what I'm going to do is, I know that F is equal to K2 into X, correct? But... Let this be star. Young's modulus is equal to F divided, where this F is restoring force, ra? have it in your mind. Restoring force in whom? In the string. Correct? Ah? So Y is equal to F by A divided by delta L by L. Here delta L is what is the extension, correct? Ah? That is X. This L will go up. So Y will be equal to F into L divided by A into X. What can I write? A divided by FL, AY divided by FL into X is equal to FY. 
does this make sense ay into x divided by l is f is it not so if i compare this with the star then what is the value of k2 that i am going to get ay by l yes that is y a by l correct now take this and substitute it in this equation ipo solunga da k effective na k effective is equal to k into y a divided by l divided by k plus y into a divided by l okay so y a k divided by k l plus y a so 2 pi root of m divided by k effectively this will go to the numerator so y a plus k l the whole divided by y into a into k this is going to be the time period trust me you can do this problem in less number of steps it is since you are doing it for the first time it is taking time so by now you should have understood what is what are the steps to be followed the formula is 2 pi root of m by k effective so k effective you need to write it as k1 k2 by k1 plus k2 so here one object is spring for spring spring constant will obviously be given for the other object you need to use a formula of eng's modulus and find or you can actually remember this itself if you have a good memory power you can write it as y into a divided by l if at all you forget these are the two extra steps you need to follow substitute it you will get the answer is there an option like this m into y a plus k l rika Uh, y a plus k l divided by y a k correct i hope it is clear guys yes sir right Then we'll move on to the next problem. Next problem. Let's see. Let's do these eighth and ninth as well. So eighth is also an application of elasticity, that is mechanical properties of solids. a highly rigid cubical block of small mass m okay and length l is fixed rigidly to another cubical block d of the same dimensions and of low modulus of rigidity neta such that the lower face of a completely covers the upper face of b okay the lower face of b is rigidly held on a horizontal surface a small force f is applied perpendicular to one of the faces of a after the force is withdrawn the block a executes simple oscillate small oscillations and what is going to be the time period of it so try to understand this question please i'll give you a minute time just try to write it uh, draw the diagram and see <clears throat> cube this is cube a so according to the complete information that they have given i understood that block b is not needed for us because block b is rigid correct huh? so this cube has side l and it has a mass m 
there is a small horizontal force applied so to a rigid object if you apply horizontal force perpendicular to one of the side faces of a okay when you apply it then the force is withdrawn then it starts oscillating right when will it be able to oscillate only when it is disturbed from its equilibrium position so what will happen with respect to a rigid object it will experience a shearing stress and a shearing strain due to which what is the modulus of elasticity will define here that is the modulus of rigidity how is it defined guys it is f divided by a this a and a are not the same sorry f divided by a have they given the area of it area is not given the area is l square it's understood f divided by a divided by what is theta. it not theta that's right so f will be equal to neta theta into a or i will write it as neta sorry neta into a into theta with a negative sign i'm putting that negative sign because it's a restoring force correct ah so m into a is equal to minus neta into a into theta so a will be equal to minus neta l square theta divided by m since a is equal to l square now tell me a is equal to omega square theta actually alpha is omega square theta okay here theta is going to be like linear displacement only because they have used one word it executes small oscillations the meaning of small oscillations is this theta is approximately equal to the linear displacement it's very very small so if i compare it with omega square x what is the value of omega i will get root of neta l square divided by capital m am i missing something so 2 pi root of m divided by neta l square just a minute i think i made a mistake because theta cannot be linear displacement this has to be the linear displacement ah hey, how do we relate uh, theta l and x define radian no radian is equal to arc length divided by radius r if you get a doubt you can take it as tan theta tan theta is equal to x by l Upper x and the x is equal to l into theta. So the correction I need to do here is l square. I will write it as wait, wait, made a mistake. So a will be equal to minus neta l into l into theta divided by m. This l into theta can be written as x. So omega will be equal to root of neta into l divided by m. So time period will be two pi root of m divided by neta into l. Is there an option? Guys, I hope I'm clear. Yes. Right. So I'm moving on to the next problem.
there is a uniform cylinder of mass uh, of length l and mass m having a cross sectional area a and is suspended with its length vertical from the fixed point by a massless spring such that it is half submerged in a liquid of density rho at equilibrium position when the cylinder is given a small downward push and release it starts oscillating vertically with a small amplitude if the force constant of the spring is k then the frequency of oscillation of the cylinder is how much there is a spring and there is a block sorry there is a cylinder and the cylinder is in such a way that half of the portion is submerged in water correct it has the spring has a spring constant k yes now we need to find the frequency of this you guys tell me how to when there is a small displacement created on this object okay when there is a small displacement created on this object what is going to be i'm repeating what is going to be the restoring force the cylinder is going to get restored due to two reasons what are they one is due to the mechanical system that is a spring it is going to experience what force buoyant force no due to the spring due to the spring it will experience a force of kx and due to the liquid it will experience a buoyant force correct as simple as that now the question is what is going to be the value of restoring force it is negative of what are the two forces that are going to act it is kx plus as you told it is going to be buoyant force and buoyant force will act the unbalanced buoyant force see again don't don't use the word buoyant force it is the unbalanced buoyant force the unbalanced buoyant force is coming due to whom i am repeating it guys listen to this carefully when the small displacement x was not created was the system at equilibrium or was it moving it was at equilibrium position the system started moving due to two restoring forces one is due to the extension in the spring and the second is there is an unbalanced condition taking place in the buoyant force so what is the value of the buoyant force buoyant force acting due to this portion is how much density of the liquid area of cross section actually it is density of the liquid into volume of the immersed portion into g correct so minus of kx plus density of the liquid is rho so what is the volume of the immersed portion which is unbalanced that is the area of cross section multiplied with the thickness x into g correct ada so minus of k plus rho ag into x is the unbalanced force if i equate this to m into a then a will be a ka m is there okay m is minus k plus rho a into g the whole divided by m into x so acceleration is minus omega square x apo omega lo root of k plus rho ag the whole divided by m but what is the value of omega 2 pi f so frequency is what they asked 1 by 2 pi into root, root of k plus rho ag divided by m which is right answer k plus rho ag so second one guys am i clear I hope it is not tough, right? So I understand. See, for the first time, if you see it, you might feel it tough, but you are able to understand, right? If this kind of problem comes, you can solve it.
ओके नेक्स्ट लेसन so let's consider it as a numerical base problem let's try to solve this this is also a combination of liquid and time period hmm. try this there is a solid sphere of radius r that is floating in a liquid of density with half of its volume submerged the sphere is like slightly pushed and released it starts performing simple harmonic motion find the frequency of these oscillations can you guys do it so initially what did they say there is a solid sphere which is floating in a liquid of density rho with half of its volume submerged okay so with that condition see if you observe this question no there is no data given so your answer should be in terms of what there are no variables given your answer should only be in terms of what parameter can you tell me what are the only variable given question sir so, uh, density density is not given no they didn't they didn't use the word rho sigma nothing else so there is one there are two objects one is sphere and the second is oh density is given a sorry sorry yeah your answer should be in terms of density and volume yes that is in terms of radius so pi can come now tell me they gave the density of the liquid This sphere is slightly pushed. Okay, so what is going to be the unbalanced point? <coughs> no. Let's try this. let's say this has got this space by a distance x so what is going to be the extra buoyant force that comes into picture if the buoyant force is balanced by the weight of the object nothing no issue it is going to be at equilibrium but here it is not so what is going to be that value that is where you need to be very careful okay and the word slightly plays an important role so when the sphere is slightly pushed into the liquid okay you are able to see i'll i'll shade it okay you are able to see a portion right so that portion is actually coming from the part of the sphere part of the sphere that is there but how is that portion actually appearing to us rectangle rectangle Think it done. Is it rectangle? It's a sphere. So rectangle will come from a circle. Sphere, my dear. Cylindrical. It actually looks like a cylinder. Right. Top portion will be like this. Correct. If I open it, it is going to be something like this. Is it not looking like a cylinder? Right. Yes. Sir. So the extra buoyant force is acting in, acting due to how much volume that is getting immersed. because the buoyant force formula is simple buoyant force is density of liquid into immersed portion of solid into g as simple as that so what is the density of the liquid that you are trying to talk about it is rho now what is the volume of the immersed portion of the solid is it not that of a sphere uh, the cylinder pi pi how much is the radius of that cylinder is it not the same radius as that of the sphere pi r square into its height is going to be x into g because volume of the cylinder is pi r square 
pi r square h volume of cylinder correct huh? so this is f is equal to i am putting a minus sign because again it's a restoring force but f is equal to m into a again m is not given m is not given means what can i do so i don't know the depth tell me uh, how is it pi r square x um, isn't it uh, given that half of its volume is submerged yeah half of the volume is submerged see this portion is not experienced wait sorry wait this portion is not experiencing the buoyant force it is similar to the previous problem in the previous problem also i told you no you need to calc see you are thinking like you are thinking under balanced condition but i am thinking under unbalanced condition the unbalanced condition is getting arised only because of the small displacement in the previous problem it was due to that small displacement in this problem what happened is in the initial scenario if it is exactly half volume of the cylinder that is inside then it is completely under balanced scenario correct huh? it is because it is it is slightly pushed inside due to which the rectangular portion is experiencing the unbalanced buoyant force or the extra buoyant force the system starts oscillating that is a sphere are you are you able to understand yes sir yes sir okay yeah so so here can i write it as ma is equal to minus rho into pi r square x into g correct ada or i will write it as pi r square g into x so that it looks like omega square x but what is the issue i have in this problem i don't know the mass of the sphere so for that i need to find its mass in terms of density of the liquid if i call the density of the solid as sigma okay let this be equation number 1 under balanced condition guys under balanced condition can i write sigma into 4 by 3 pi r square into g is equal to what did i write on the left hand side can you tell me sigma is the volume uh, density of the solid 4 by 3 pi r cube is the volume of the sphere immersed into g portion. not immersed okay. portion it is a total sphere 4 by 3 pi r cube into g it is not immersed portion because what is the weight of a solid weight of a solid is density of solid into volume of the complete solid into g it is not immersed portion so the immersed portion concept comes only for the buoyant force that's what archimedes principle told that is density of the liquid into 1 by 2 of 4 by 3 pi r cube into g this is density of liquid into volume of immersed portion into g this is buoyant force this is weight correct ah so 4 by 3 pi r cube 4 by 3 pi r cube g and g are gone what is the value of sigma sigma is equal to rho divided by 2 that is what they are expecting us to calculate by giving the first set of information using the word floating that's why it's a four mark question okay sigma is equal to rho by 2 so what i can do on the left hand side is if i write ma is equal to minus rho into pi r square g into x i am writing i am rewriting the same equation then in the place of m i can write it as rho by 2 into 4 by 3 pi r cube into g sorry no g because it is only mass into acceleration a is equal to rho minus rho into pi r square g into x pi is gone 1 r is gone rho is also gone so a will be equal to minus 3 by 2 times g by r into x so omega evlo it is 3g by 2r under a root so frequency will be 1 by 2 pi times root of 3g by 2 This is a very good problem. If there is any doubt, get it clarified. If there is any conceptual doubt or any step that is unclear, get it clarified.
so can you explain that um, the equilibrium condition which one how you derive the density under under balance and okay yes. so under balance condition mechanically mg is equal to buoyant force this is clear right that's what they told by floating so when it is floating in such a way that half of its volume not the radius half of its volume is inside the liquid under that scenario what see how can how do i write weight weight is nothing but density of solid into volume of solid which is complete volume of solid correct into g is equal to what is the buoyant force buoyant force is density of liquid into volume of immersed portion of liquid into g so density of the solid i took it as sigma now you tell me what is the volume of the complete solid that is 4 by 3 pi r cube r cube okay g is going to get cancelled i don't need it density of the liquid they have given rho into under what scenario of the volume of immersed portion is it under equilibrium when and half of it half of yes half of 4 by 3 pi r cube is inside so this and this will get cancelled that is why i got sigma is equal to rho by 2 Is this what you asked? Yes, sir. Okay. Now I hope it is clear. Yes, sir. Okay. Make a note of it. this is based on moment of inertia it's slightly tough again you have density based problem you can try it okay. see generally these 90 90s to 2000 5 2600 problems will be slightly tough if you do those kind of problems it will actually help you for uh, the current exam okay so time period i am leaving it to you next we will do the spring based problems i have already taught you the concept of parallel and series now our work is only to do them okay let's start so it's a 2019 main question of 12th april let's see so there is a spring whose unstretched length is l and has a force constant k okay i better suggest you to look at the spring in terms of a resistor so that you will understand but you have to remember one thing whatever happens the order whatever is the formula in the case of a series resistor is exactly the opposite here but imagine them like a resistor because resistor also has some dependency of length and area r is equal to rho l by a is there no so spring will also spring will also be something like that similar to that okay now let's see how to approach so there is a spring whose unstretched length is l and it has a force constant The spring is cut into two pieces of unstretched lengths L1 and L2, where L1 is equal to n times L2 and n is an integer. The ratio of k1 by k2 of the corresponding force constant k1 and k2 will be how much in terms of n? Okay. So how do you proceed? some some idea guys what is coming to your mind so there is a spring whose unstretched length is l okay and this time get it now the spring is cut into two parts okay 
this is L1 and let's assume L2. L1 is n times L2. We don't know what that n value is. The ratio of K1 and K2 of the corresponding force constants K1 and K2 will be how much? So how do I find K1 by K2? So where K1 should be the spring constant of this and K2 should be the spring constant of the other. Now tell me what is the relation between K1, K2 and the K. For these two springs to become the bigger spring, how am I supposed to connect them? Series. Series. That's it, right? You got the answer, then what? Then what is the value of K1, K2 and all other things? K effective, that is K, is equal to K1, K2 by K1 plus K2. Right. But how? So in the case of series, F is directly proportional to K. Uh, sorry. In the case of series, F is equal to Kx. Since F is a constant, can I say K is inversely proportional to X? So K will be equal to, in the place of K1, can I write it as 1 by L1? The place of K2, can I write it as 1 by L2 divided by 1 by L1 plus 1 by L2? Guys, is there any doubt in this? So I'm repeating it again. In the case of series, the force in all the three cases will be the same. Here, F is same, F is same, F is same. When F is a constant, Kx will be a constant. K is inversely proportional to them. So 1 by L1 into 1 by L2 by 1 by L1 plus 1 by L2. So 1 by n times L2 into 1 by L2. I'm leaving L2 as it is. 1 by n times L2 plus 1 by L2. So what will happen? 1 by n times L2 square divided by n plus 1 by n times L2. We don't have L at all, right? Did I do any mistake? 1 by L in L2 square. Well, I'm trying to find the effective value. Gee. Actually, they ask K1 by K2. K1 by K2 is nothing but L2 by L1. L2 by L1 is nothing but that's the answer. I don't know why I did all these things. Guys, did you understand what I did? K1 by K2 is equal, I wrote it as is equal to L2 by L1 because K is inversely proportional to L. L2 by L1, but L1 is given as N times L2. So that will be 1 by N. So all these things I did to find the effective uh, spring constant. That's not needed, sorry. Sir, in the F field of KX, is it the extension of the spring or is the length of the spring? Huh? It is extension, actually. Here I used it as length. See, F is equal to Kx. If I take, if I take that X as, ex actually it is extension only. Okay, well. But if I take it as length in this case, I am assuming that it is already in the extended state. So I take this as the same force being applied on all these things. But you, I hope you understood this concept, Le that these two joined together in series is going to give you the bigger spring. So when that is the case, I need to find the relation. So F is going to be a constant. I want the relation between K and L because the question they have given in those terms only. So that is the reason I use this concept of inversely proportional. But uh, to answer your question precisely, X stands for extension. Okay. Okay, so moving on to the 
just give me a minute guys charge and my pencil is over you can try the next problem i'll show you the question you can just read the question and be ready so there is a massless spring which is attached with a mass of 500 grams is completely immersed in 1 kg of water the spring is stretched by 2 cm and released so that it starts vibrating it is similar to that problem which we did what would be the order of magnitude of change in temperature when the vibration stop completely assume that water container and spring receive negligible heat and specific heat of specific heat of the mass is 400 joule per kilogram per kelvin specific heat of water is 4184 joule per kilogram per kelvin let's first think why is the temperature going to increase okay so temperature of something can increase only if heat is supplied is correct huh? so heat is supplied means energy is utilized here let's think of which energy is being utilized for the heat to get generated as simple as that you are going to get the answer okay but i hope everybody knows the specific heat right don't look at the temperature and get scared i hope everybody knows the formula you would have learned in your chemistry thermodynamics also q is equal to mc delta t do you know this where m stands for mass c stands for specific heat capacity or specific heat both mean the same into delta t yes right so let's try this problem so there is a massless spring okay attached to a mass and is completely immersed this is an important completely immersed in 1 kg of water the spring is stretched by 2 cm and then released okay so when the spring is stretched by 2 cm what is the energy possessed by the spring It's half k x squares. It is half k x square. Here I will take it as x m square because the two centimeter is going to be the amplitude of the oscillation of that particular spring in this scenario. X m is the maximum extension. How much is that value? That is two centimeter. The value of k is given a eight hundred newton per meter. I hope this point is clear. Is it not this energy that is getting converted to Right, half into k into x m square. Is this not the energy that is getting converted to the heat energy, which is nothing but the heat generated due to the uh, solid plus the heat generated due to the liquid? So Q one plus Q two. What is the value of Q one? That is mass of the block into specific heat of the block or C of the block. C or L both mean the same. Specific heat of the block into delta T plus mass of the water into specific heat of water into the same rise in temperature delta T. Right. So you have all the values. So they are asking the rise in temperature. That's it, right? The change in temperature. That is the increase in the value. So you have half is known. K is known. X M is known. Mass of the block is known. Specific heat of the block is known. That is four hundred. Mass of water is known, which is one kilogram. Specific heat of water is known, four thousand one eighty four, and delta T. So one unknown, one equation. You can solve it. Right. Is the concept clear? Calculation part, I'm leaving it to you. And one more important point: if these kind of questions with lot of calculation come in the exam, have it as a last preference. If this kind of problems come with general values, have it as first preference. In physics, that is advantage. Whatever has a general variable, you will get the answer in three to four steps. Unlike math. Math takes a longer time. Okay, shall we move on, guys?
Yes, sir. Okay. We'll do one last problem. See, actually, with this, the concepts are over. The remaining things you have to sit and practice and approach me for the doubts. Let's see. See, this is also a very good problem. So there are two light identical springs, means they have the spring constant K, are attached horizontally to the two ends of a uniform horizontal rod AB of length L and mass M. The rod is pivoted at its center O and can rotate freely in a horizontal plane. Okay. The other ends of the spring are fixed to a rigid support as shown. Now the question is, the rod is gently pushed through a small angle theta and release. The frequency of the resulting oscillation is going to be how much? How do we proceed? So, is this an example of a translatory motion or rotation motion? Rotation. Rotation. So, obviously, we need to start thinking in terms of torque. Right? So, we know that torque is equal to I into alpha. Let's try to do something with this. So, when I talk about the moment of inertia, here, how many... So, we need to look at the things like this, okay? How many objects are there? Three. Three. Where it is one rod and the other two are springs. So for me to define the moment of inertia, what is the necessary necessary characteristic the material should have? It should have mass. As simple as that. Any object without mass, you are not going to define inertia. When there is no inertia, there is no, obviously no rotation of inertia. Also. They use the word light. So springs do not have moment of inertia. So what is the value of I? So I is going to exist only for whom? Only for the rod. And the, when the rod is pivoted at its center, what is the moment of inertia about its center? ML square by 12. As simple as that. So, I is equal to ML square by 12. So, all our questions are answered. Now comes an important point. How do I find the restoring torque? Who is going to provide me the restoring torque? For that, I need to understand how the unbalanced condition is going to exist. Right, guys, concentrate, okay? They use, the see, everywhere they use the word small displacement. Younger, they attached. The rod is gently pushed through small angle. They use the word small angle because if you have sine theta or tan theta, it can be approximated to theta. That is objective. So, with respect to its initial scenario of lying like this, let's say it has got displaced through a small angle with respect to the vertical by a value theta. Then what is going to happen to both the springs? So, spring has the property to get... Yes, they get compressed. So, when they get compressed, then there is going to be a restoring force acting on the object. In which direction? Kx due to the bottom spring to the right and Kx due to the top spring to the left, obviously. And are in these two forces, so if I ask you what is the net force acting on this rod, what is your answer going to be? Zero. Net force is zero. But if I ask you what is the net torque acting on it, is your answer still going to be zero? No. No. Reason being, the forces form a couple because they are acting on either side of the axis of rotation. Correct? Huh? So, so, what is the unbalanced torque that is acting? That is what I need to answer. If I answer that, I, I got the answer then. I'll be able to solve this. Unbalanced weight. Torque is how much? 
So I know the formula of torque as force into perpendicular distance. I'm going to apply the same thing. So which force is responsible for the torque to act on this object? So this distance is L by 2, correct? Ada? Because it is pivoted exactly at its center. So if this angle is theta, the vertically opposite angle is also going to be theta. Correct? Ada? So if I take the triangle ABC, if I take the triangle ABC, this is theta, this is L, then what is going to be the, sorry, L by 2, then what is going to be the perpendicular distance? If I take this as Y, Y divided by L by 2 is going to give me how much? Sin theta. Sin theta. So, Y can I write it as L by 2 times sin theta? So, force is Kx into L by 2 times sin theta into how many, <coughs> sorry, how many such torques are acting? Two. Since it, there are two torques. Correct? So, 2 times, that is this 2 and 2 will get cancelled. Can I write this as K into L sin theta into X is equal to correct, uh, L sin theta into X is equal to where X is this much, this value. I have to write X also in terms of theta. Can I write it as ML square by 12 into correct, uh, into alpha? Guys, does this equation make sense? Are you guys able to understand? KL sin theta into x is equal to ml square by 12 into alpha. Yes, sir. Right. Now, I am stuck with one thing. They told the angle is small. So, sin theta, I will take it as theta. Happy. But what can I do with x? I need to do something with x. What do I do with it? Then can I take that x by L by 2 as something? Theta. Cos theta. X by L by 2 is cos theta. Okay. So K L sin theta. This involves a lot of max. Listen to this carefully. Okay. L by 2 sin theta. Correct. That is ML square by 12 into theta. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. ML by 2 cos theta, correct? Now tell me, when theta is small, your limits and derivatives will tell you. Okay, limit theta tends to 0. What is sine theta? It is actually 0, but can I approximate it to theta? Where theta is in terms of radians, when theta is very small, that is the meaning of tending to 0. Similarly, when theta tends to 0, cos theta is going to be 1. So if I use these two values here, then what can I write that equation as? K into L square by 2 into cos theta, I'm writing it as 1. Sin theta, I'm writing it as theta is equal to ML square by 12 into alpha. L square, L square gone. ML square by 12, this is going to be 6 times. So alpha will be equal to 6 times K divided by M into theta. So if I compare this with alpha is equal to omega square theta, what is the value of omega? root of 6k by m. Are they asking frequency or time period? Frequency. f is equal to 1 by 2 pi into root of 6k divided by m. option. So by now you should have understood mechanics is all about applying trigonometry right and using the right equations for force this is a very good chapter to practice even if you have not practiced the other chapters if you do this right you're able to see how many concepts are getting covered we are using rotation mechanics we are using buoyant and force we are using everything almost so i suggest you to practice it very well and if there is any doubt you can approach me okay so is this problem clear
Yes, sir. So, in the very time period frequency equations, let's somehow you have to get to the angular acceleration or acceleration, and then you have to compare it. Exactly. That is one. That is only procedure. Nothing else. That is all. And the steps for the method. That is what you need. I use the same logic everywhere. Unbalanced torque. So only thing is, na before you start the problem, you need to ask certain basic questions like this: whether is this problem going to be related to translatory motion or accelerate uh, or uh, rotation motion. depending on that only we'll start writing the equations of force or torque so this problem if you see we had a clarity that it is rotating so i started with torque freedom that that clarity alone you need to have no okay yeah. so that's it from my side today for today so if there is no doubt we can wind up will wind up guys just a minute